Let me tell you a story. Back in the 70s, there was a young teenage guitar player in Sweden named Reina Stolt, and he decided that he was going to play progressive rock. He joined a band called Kepa and released three fantastic albums. Uh, we thought we'd never hear from this guy ever again. Fast forward to 1994, Reina Stolt puts out his first solo album. It's called The Flower King. And the Flower Kings is born. He decided to keep that band together. He decided to make it a full-time thing. People were into it. And why not? The music was absolutely amazing. This was kind of the beginning of the third wave of Prague. And uh, the Flower Kings are a very important band to me. They were actually the first of that third wave that I truly took to and enjoyed. I love them. They have a brand new album coming out in a couple of weeks. Uh, I am going to include the new album in my ranking. I've had it for a little while, so I think I got a feel for it. I'll do an album review of it later on, probably next week. But without further ado, we are going to rank all 17 of the Flower King's albums. So yes, we are including the Flower King from 1994 and Royna Stoltz, the Flower King, the Manifesto of an Alchemist from 2018. So that's 17 total. And we're starting with number 17. We're going to 2001 and The Rainmaker. This was the last album with drummer Jamie Salazar. He was not happy with the band at this point. He was doing all his uh, drums remotely, barely speaking to anybody. Uh, it shows it's got a couple of great tracks. The Last Minute on Earth is amazing. Through the Walls, really good. City of Angels is decent. Um, for a worst album, you can do a lot worse than The Rainmaker. At number 16... We're going to 1996 and the second official Flower Kings record, Retropolis. This is the one that has the absolute least amount of input from the great Hasse Froberg, who is the second vocalist in the band. Um, the songs were not quite as strong as the debut or the first Flower King album. It's a nice record, but they kind of didn't know where they were going. The name implies retro prog, and oh, it, it's pretty retro. I mean, it's spot the influence all the way through that record. It's decent. It's good. At number 15, I'm going with the aforementioned Manifesto of an Alchemist from 2018. This was uh, Reina Stoltz's low stakes affair. He had some downtime. He had some studio time booked. So he just brought in some people and uh, and just did some, some music. And it, it's actually really good. I, I like it quite a bit. At number 14, we're going for uh, 2019's Waiting for Miracles. This was the uh, the first of the reunion albums. Uh, Thomas Bowden no longer in the band. Uh, so they've got a new keyboard player, Zach Kamens, uh, who comes from a band called uh, An Endless Sporadic, which I guess is pretty much just him. He's an incredible musician. This record was this new band trying to figure out what they wanted to do. Um, it's a little short. There's a second disc that doesn't even amount to a full album. It's it's not great, but Miracles for America. Oh, that's the best song they've done in quite some time. It's amazing. At number 13, we're going to that first album, The Flower King from 1994, the one that started it all. It's got Humanizo on there. You don't need to know nothing else. It's got the title track, The Flower King's there's some good tracks on here. It was a really nice way uh, for him to start this thing going, and it was pretty obvious why he wanted to keep it going. Uh, it's really great. At number 12, going with Paradox Hotel. This one came out in 2006. It's yet another double album from the band. Uh, this was the only album to feature uh, Marcus Lilliquist on drums. He plays a real rock heavy style, so it's a little different than any other Flower Kings record. And it has that incredible epic of Monsters and Men. Oh, one of my favorite long tracks from them. Uh, hit me with a hit. Really should have been a hit. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, so I'm going with uh, number 12, Paradox Hotel. And number 11, we're going to 2020's Islands. This was a really nice record. The second of the reunion albums, uh, definitely better than the first one. They were figuring out the direction they wanted to go. Um, it's pretty light and breezy com 
considering it's a COVID record and this is all about isolation and lockdown and, and feeling alone and uh, the lack of community and connectivity, uh, but it's a great record. It's got the Roger Dean cover. What else do you want? At number 10, we're going with the very first Flower Kings album, Back in the World of Adventures. This is a dynamite record. Uh, it's got some killer tracks on it, not least of which is the title track. And it's bookended by another epic at the back end, The Big Puzzle, which was the first song that really gripped me and hooked me in and got me uh, to be a Flower Kings fan. It's, it's really, really good. At number nine, I'm going with Desolation Rose from 2013. This might be their darkest record. Um, the, the subject matter here is definitely uh, kind of the opposite of what you expect from the Flower Kings, which are, uh, Roy Nostalda is always so breezy and, and optimistic and happy and, and hippy trippy dippy, kind of like a new age John Anderson. But this one's dark. It, it, it covers a lot of real dark territory, but it's, it's really, really good. At number eight, uh, I've got 2004's Adam and Eve. A lot of people don't love this album, and there's some tracks on here that really aren't terrific. This is where, you know, the filler argument with the Flower Kings is maybe semi-justified, but it's got the Love Supreme on it. That's all I need to know. Yeah, there's some other great tracks on there. Babylon is is fantastic. Uh, the Blade of Cain is really, really good. Driver's Seat's really good, but oh, oh, the Love Supreme. 20 minutes of absolute prog perfection. Okay, at number seven, I'm going with the new one, 2022's by Royal Decree. I'm not going to talk about it, though. We're doing an album review later. Next, number six is The Banks of Eden from 2012. This is a dynamite album. Uh, this is the one with the last uh, Flower King's true epic, the song Numbers. It's heavy, it's crunchy, it's complicated. This is a fantastic album. It's not a super long album, uh, so it goes by really, really fast. But when you start with Numbers, uh, <laughs> yeah, that album's going to be ranked pretty high. At number five, Unfold the Future. Oh, this is their jazzy album. Uh, this was the first album with the great uh, Zoltan Source on uh, uh, drums. This guy's amazing. He's now in Life Signs. I love his drumming style. I love Unfold the Future. Like I said, it's kind of their jazz record, jazz fusion, although it starts with their best song. The 30-minute The Truth Will Set You Free. Oh. Uh, if you don't know these guys and you just want to check them out, that's the song to check out. It's incredible. Uh, I love it. At number four, I'm going with Space Revolver. Uh, this is the first album with the great Jonas Rheingold on bass. Uh, Michael Stolt uh, played on the first four albums. He's back on the new album. But uh, Jonas Rheingold is one of the greatest bass players in the history of mankind. There's a reason Steve Hackett is using him as his bass player exclusively. The guy's amazing. And uh, Space Revolver, it's got I Am The Sun, parts one and two. It's got the fun little shorter songs like the Chicken Farmer song. Oh, it, it, it's a short album. It's a single disc. Excellent starting point at number three. I'm going with Flower Power from 1999. Yeah, this is the one with the 60-minute long Garden of Dreams. It's truly one of the, uh, the, the greatest epics of all time. It's an 18-part uh, suite. It's just incredible. Uh, yeah, yeah, just for that alone, um, Flower Power deserves uh, to be in this spot. But the second disc is really, really good, too. Uh, Deb Numb and Blind, Painter, I love that song. Uh, yeah, yeah. Number two, I've got The Sum of No Evil from 2007. This is a record that uh, it's retro all the way. This is actually kind of the last retro prog album, The Flower King's did. Uh, all their subsequent records have been more in the modern prog lane. This is retro all the way with your vintage instruments and everything's analog. Oh man, uh, the uh, love is the only answer. Uh, I just, I just love the entire record. It's number two for a reason. Fantastic. 
But that leads us to the number one Flower Kings album. And it's no surprise. It's probably most people's favorite Flower Kings album. We're talking about 1997's Stardust We Are. Um, it's perfect. I love every song. The epics are great. It ends with the 25-minute uh, title track. But you've got some great shorter songs. Church of Your Heart, Ghost of the Red Cloud. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah. Stardust We Are. Uh Definitely my favorite Flower Kings album. Like I said, there's a new Flower Kings record coming out. I'm going to be posting a review next week of it, but I just wanted to uh, do this real quick to kind of reference where the new one slots into the discography. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, please hit that subscribe button or don't hit that subscribe button. It's all good to me. I'm going to be doing this either way, talking about prog rock, and I'm excited because I love the Flower Kings so much. Much, and I love you guys. I'll see you very, very soon.